Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. So today I'm going to be looking at a battery from Watt Cycle, 280 amp hours. Back in January, I uh, reviewed one of their batteries, which was labeled as a 300 amp hour. I was interested in it because it was called the Mini and it uh, had a very small footprint. Um, unfortunately, they ran into problems. They had mislabeled it. The cells in it were only 280 and they had put 300 on it. Also their uh, BMS uh, wouldn't shut off. It would just uh, keep putting out voltage. So it didn't really have a, a, a high current disconnect functionality working. So they, they admitted their fault and actually offered discounts and, and refunds to people, which was good as a company, I thought. But uh, they also offered to send me out the updated model. And that's what I'm gonna have a look at today. Now this one, they've relabeled at 280 amp hours. So we'll have a look and see if that is true. Cause the other one I didn't uh, tear down. This one I've decided to take the top off and explore how the build quality is and check the cells. I'm also gonna test this 200 amp BMS and make sure it in fact uh, does shut down for a high current disconnect above that. Also, this one has the built-in Bluetooth and the other one didn't have that. So kind of the, a more a polished um, model that they've introduced. So let's get a look at it. I think what I'm gonna do also is uh, mate it up with the, the other one that I have and uh, put them together in my RV and use them for the next uh, two or three months of RV before we get back to the boat. And then I can have an update when we get back to the boat on how they perform. So let's go. So the first test I wanna do is to confirm that they have rectified the discharge protection. It shouldn't be able to go over 200 amps. So I got a couple of heaters, heat gun and a heater here that will pull, put me over 200 amps. So we'll just start with this first. Okay, so we're up around 118 amps. Start turning this heater on. One seventy amps. Go to the next level. There we are, two hundred amps. Right at two hundred amps. It's handling it. We've got one more level to go that'll push us up over. There we go. I saw 250 amps there briefly and then discharging shut off. So looks like they've rectified that. It's the protection is working properly now. Next, I'm going to take the lid off, pop it apart, and we'll have a look at the build quality inside. Also, I'll try to figure out if it has a low temperature protection. Okay, took quite a bit of effort to get that lid off. <clears throat> it's quite well sealed with sort of a, a silicone substance. It'll help weatherproof it. Anyway, everything looks really nice in here. They even went to the effort of uh, putting insulators on the inside terminals here, which I've never seen. We've got uh, four 8-gauge wires here on the positive and three 6-gauge, 200 Celsius, rated for 200 Celsius. Quite nice. There's the Bluetooth there. And I think these are the temperature sensors, low temperature sensor. It's even got a metal frame on each side. And the BMS is screwed to the metal cross member. So everything is nicely uh, set up in here with a frame and everything. Unlike some cheap batteries that are just fiberboard and tape and everything. You can see here they've put insulators between the bus bars that are exposed underneath here. So yeah, physically everything looks 
quite nice. You just pull this BMS up and see if we can get a look at the code on the cells. You can see there's four big lithium cells. And we've got uh, laser welded, looks like aluminum bus bars. Okay, managed to get a picture of a QR code in there so we can look it up. Let's peek under here. See the bus bars have a little hump in them for uh, heat expansion. Looks like the BMS has got a nice metal plate on the back. So yeah, everything looks really nice in here, I think. So I give them kudos for listening to, to people's feedback and working to correct the problem in the original battery, which was mislabeled at 300 amp hours. So this one is 280. They've added here the, the Bluetooth, which people like. I have a Bluetooth app for monitoring. Design looks good. Cells look pretty good. The only thing I'd like them to see, I'd like to see them do, is maybe go with a lid that could be taken off a little easier without actually trying to destroy the battery to get the lid off. Mainly because, you know, the company hasn't been around very long. Say they go to business in two years. This battery can last 10, 20 years something goes wrong in it at least if you can get the lid off you can you know fix it say you have a bad connection somewhere or maybe the bms board fails but you still got you know your cells you could always replace things yourself so i always like to see a battery that is serviceable once the lid's off everything looks very serviceable in here i like the the metal frame there that's really really a nice touch to do that and looks like fairly decent quality wires and connectors. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is because I have the other one, the earlier one, the 300 amp hour, that actually is a 280. So basically the same, the same cells are in it. I'm going to pair them and run them in my RV for the next. Uh, we got two more months of uh, camping to do, so I can give it a little them a little longer term test in actual day-to-day -day use. So let's go install those in my front storage compartment and hook them up. Okay, so here's the setup. Got them paralleled in here. So that's a total of 560 amp hours. Amazing how small of a space that takes. Guess that's why they call them the mini. Anyway, I'm going to use this till we get back to the boat in May and then I'll come back with a, an update video. I'm actually going to use these in the boat, I think, to run the bow thruster and the anchor. Do some modifications in the boat and utilize them there. Till next time, Ray from Lovey RV and boat. Cheers, guys.